Happy Friday, everybody. Today on Volume West From Home, we're celebrating a very important moment in the world. It is World Goth Day today. That is a thing, look it up. And I can think of no better way for me and my co-host today, Davey Havoc, to celebrate than to have two legends on for what I'm sure is going to be a fascinating roundtable and some exclusive news. We have Lowell Tolhurst, who's been on the show before from, of course, The Cure. And first time guest to Volume West, we have Budgie from Susie and the Banshees and The Creatures and many other bands. And we just have to say, we are so honored that we're having you both on the show together. This Indeed is we are. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Well, <laughs> thank, thank you, Lindsay. Lindsay. Thank, thank you, Davey. Hey, we're in sync, Lowell. Oh, no. <laughs> I oh, know, we're a regular duo. <laughs> How can we do that? We're separated by thousands of miles. Yeah, I know. Right, so, of technology. Lowell, you're in Los Angeles, but Budgie, where yes. are you zooming in from? You're overseas, right? Uh, ich bin in Deutschland, uh, Germany, Berlin. Wow. Wow, very cool. So how's it over there these days? Like, you know, um, what's the... Right now, it's dark outside, or it's certainly <laughs> going dark. <laughs> How appropriate. Uh, and uh, Berlin, uh, true to form, is uh, probably ignoring more than of the COVID r rules than maybe it, it mm. should adhere to. Wow, I'm kind of um, surprised. I know, I always thought the Germans were sticklers for, like, regimentation <laughs> right. and following rules. They like only, rule. their, only their own rules, you know. If you kind of, right. like, you know, pull in, like, just kind of pull away, uh, like, before the light's gone green, they'll stop the car and, like, you sort you out, you know. <laughs> nine, nine, <laughs> you <laughs> The civilians? <laughs> yeah, das ist verboten. Nein. <laughs> 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 well, I'm so glad that the two of you should, two of you guys could come on the show because I know you guys have, you've been working together on some things. I know you're at liberty to sort of give our listeners a scoop that you're working on um, individually and together several products. Yeah. Why don't you tell us what's going on? What are you working on? I'm so excited to hear all about it. Um, for about the last year or so, it's, it's been a long road, but for the last year, me and Budgie have been uh, working on a new album. So we have a, a new project called LXB. You'll work out what it means after a while. We've just finished an album with super producer Jackknife Lee, who I think you probably know, Davey. Yeah, I worked with Jackknife. It was really delightful. Uh, we worked on Crash Love, I believe, with an AFI record from about 10 years ago. He's, he's really great. Wow. Uh, how, yeah. many, how many tracks have, are you guys doing with him? We've done about 13 at the moment. <laughs> and... We have lots of different people coming to do stuff with us, you know, because obviously it's like, you know, it's two drummers, so it's very, very rhythmic. Hmm. But um, we've, we've got different people. I mean, we, we've had Bobby Gillespie from Primal Scream has come and uh, cool. sung a few songs for us. And we've got a few more people coming in the works, you know. And can we talk about the sound at all? Is that allowed? I'll let Budgie describe the sound because uh, I, I don't even know like... where to start. How do I describe it? It sounds like old Jackknife has been kind of maybe doing some research as well. So it's, it's a real amalgamation of more sort of early cure and creatures. Okay. But it does, it, it's neither of those things in whole. But it's, uh, as I, I think we were talking earlier, and it sounds very the spirit of 77. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. So does it? So I, with two drummers, my mind was questioning whether it was it had some of the world elements of creatures and possibly dead can dance, or if it went more Adam and the Ants and and Bow Wow Wow <laughs> or something else. But since you since you mentioned this, the seventy seven, does it have that? Well, element? yeah. There's uh, there's some sort of idols stuff. Can I can I sing? Floating around. <laughs> if you are wondering, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We were going to ask you. Can I sing? Well, we need somebody that's a bit more, um, you know, of this era. You know, we have. Been... Well, that wouldn't be me, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can ask Billie Eilish. She might do it. <laughs> no, yeah. you got. Come on, we got to make this happen. Davy's always singing on the show. Anyway, I'm very big into trying to make collaborations happen. Like when Michael Debar and Susie Quattro were on together, I like made them sing together. Oh, wow. I would love to see um, if that happened. If you guys are being serious, you heard it here first. Before I'm I, totally uh, down. Before I ruin your, your, your band, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> When's the new record coming out? Do you, or I mean, it sounds like it's, you're still working on it, but do you have a tentative idea? Well, uh, I was the, talking At the with, end of the lockdown, right? Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> I was talking with Jack Knife the other day, and uh, we've got a couple more 
vocalist and maybe maybe Dovey, if we send you some tracks maybe oh, yeah. yeah i'm in um so <laughs> i'm so excited oh my god <laughs> yes it so has to happen all the music's done we've done we've done all the music pretty much and we have a, a couple of guests on that which is kind of interesting as well and very very punk rock and you know as soon as that's done then then we'll put it out but we want to, we want to tour with it obviously you know so that's wow. you know Nothing's happening on that front until next year, you know, so it'll be towards the end of the year. We will put it out. You know, we're talking to a couple of labels and stuff right now. Besides Bobby Gillespie yeah. and Davey Havoc, of course, can yeah. you, are you at liberty to drop any other names that I, I imagine a lot of people from different <laughs> eras and different genres would love to be part of this project? Well, we have, we got a late arrival from uh, the guitarist with idols. Um, mm. I think he's the dentist. I think there's yeah, like, the dentist, there's, Bowen, he's yeah. the dentist. Yeah. Yeah. He's the dentist. I saw them recently on a YouTube of last year's Glastonbury performance. Mm. And I just got a tear in my eye. This guy was just, I, I saw them in a TV studio, which was really brilliant because there was Jules Holland in, in Britain. And, um, they, they did a whole like attack the audience thing, you know, like run off camera, put up into the middle of the studio somewhere. Well, I, I think... um, and I, I just thought Joe is amazing. Yeah. And um, I think we we got some kind of word the other day that he might be up for one of the tracks, which would I just think be Joe's going to be singing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, and, um, and and do we reveal more? Um, yes. Yeah. We could, she's, she's priming us for it. We could um, try. We could try, but we, yeah. we don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> don't want to jinx anything, but but All we right. do. Uh, Kim Gordon, yeah. Really? Yeah. I've heard that. Well, wow, this is really exciting. How did this project, I mean, I, obviously you guys have known each other for a long time, but how did this project come together? It's a, a gentleman by the name of Joe Wong, who does a program, a podcast called The Trap Set. Trap Set being drum kits. And I think, Lol, you'd already uh, made friends with Joe. Yeah, I mean, Joe been friends for like, about six or seven years. So um, mm -hmm. he told me that uh, uh, Budgie yeah. was coming to town. And I was I on said, tour yeah. with uh, John Grant, singer-songwriter. Oh, from... yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. He so lives in he, Iceland. He lives in Reykjavik, yeah. yeah and so right. for the last three years, really, I've been working with John. And we've been over to the States a couple of times. Um, so I was in Los Angeles, I think, for 24 hours because you know, John doesn't like to stop anywhere. Um, so we landed like somewhere up near Echo Park at some kind of Masonic Hall. Mm. And I would got the invitation from Joe. So downtown L.A., we'll meet for breakfast. And so do you mind if Lol from like your old mate comes and joins us? I thought, well, how brilliant. And I did that thing. So, you know, like really just, I jumped out of a taxi and like that, the squalor of downtown LA and there's like police horses, like, you know, charging people and there's camps over here. And I'm just stood outside the cafe, right? Where we're supposed to be meeting. I go inside, you know, make sure that everything's okay. And then I see Lol outside. So I kind of snuck out behind him and thought I'll surprise him. And cause, so I yeah. went behind him and put my arms around him and went like, oh, hello, Lol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he, Lol, he Lol nearly he got was... himself South London uh, for a <laughs> second. Yeah. I realized it was lovely. The, the, you know, this was probably not the best area to, to, <laughs> to run up and grab somebody from yeah. behind. <laughs> anyway, the event passed without too much con uh, concern. And um, I think we had finished breakfast and Lol said, because there were three of us then, weren't there, Lol? There was Kevin. We have, Kevin. I was about Kevin to ask because I remember when Lowell came on the show uh, yeah. about a year ago, maybe around the time we were talking about yeah. the Rock Hall of Fame, yeah. you had just dropped this photo yeah. of you, Budgie, and Kevin Haskins, yeah. like the three great drummers. And yeah. I, so was Kev, I was wondering if Kevin's involved in all this. Well, uh -huh. yes. Yes. <laughs> initially, initially, initially. Good initially, job, Lindsay. <laughs> initially, it was us. It was, you know, the three of us sort of hung out and we did some stuff and that. And then Kevin had to go and play with Bauhaus. So, mm. you know, and uh, it was it was really, you know, the culmination of a lot of things in our life and it's worked out really well because, you know, we we've been through very similar things in our life. So that that was really good. So it, it's felt really spiritual, really strong, really, really good to do it, you know, and 
before we get too ancient, you know, and, and can't pick up some sticks and stuff. But yeah, it was funny. I mean, you, you've worked with Jackknife, so you know it's it was like the most completely different experience than any of us have had at uh, recording. You know? It's true. I did I did have a very unique experience with him that I really enjoyed. Uh, yes. He he his his tone and his way of working really suited me because it was to use a word that you guys have been using very punk rock, uh, which yeah. is you know how I believe we all grew up. Uh, grew up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you to both of you, by the way, for allowing, <laughs> yes. allowing me to grow up that way. Yes. I really appreciate it. <laughs> can, can I ask you guys, uh, do you happen to recall when the two of you met? Do you remember your meeting? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Please do I tell. I only know because this was photographic evidence. Am I correct? I think it was outside Morgan Studios yes. or Battery Studios in Wilsdon in London. Yeah. 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 1979, <laughs> because the, the Cure did probably the only tour besides one we did with Billy Idol and Generation X, but we uh, we got asked to open for the Banshees, you know, on the Join Hands tour, 1979. And uh, so we all met up for a, a sort of get together and understand about each other. And there's a picture of me and Budgie and Michael and Sue. R and Robert uh, and Severin. Robert's Severin sitting on the back of this truck. Outside. The thing is, I just, I'd only just joined. On that tour, I joined yeah. Susan the Banshees. Because the yeah. original guitarist and original drummer, quick, you know, do your homework. Yeah. But it's did like, you <laughs> forgive, I, forgive forgive me? Did you join? You joined and you, you recorded Join Hands, correct? No, no, oh, you they, did it. You they, joined they, and then toured on Join Hands. If you want then. to hear like the real kind of story, the story goes: I just finished the Slits Cut album. Yeah, so, yeah, that's so. wild. <laughs> <laughs> It is wild. Cause <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> we can come. There's so many stories right from there. Because I just met up with Viv, Viv Albertine, who is the guitarist. Yeah. You know, and Viv's written two amazing oh, books. Oh, oh, one of my favorite life. books ever. Yeah. Oh, you mean you recently just met up with Viv? So right, she was on a book tour. She came through Berlin. I paid my pro ticket for the whole festival just to see <laughs> Viv, and they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> what? But you, then, you bought a ticket. What? <laughs> I, I bought a ticket for the festival, but the book signing, the book talk was sold out. Oh, so, those bloody publishers. Oh, so yeah. I'm going, <laughs> okay, I'm going to sit here, like, because I know we're backstage, you know, I know that door, yeah. I know the look of the place. So I'm going, I'm going to sit here. And I'm there for about 10 minutes. And then Viv walks out and I shout, mm. Viv. And she goes, looks at me. And we just like, Walk towards each other and just give us a big hug, wow. and it must have been you know two decades plus. Wow! Last time Is I saw it would probably be like you know yeah we'd probably left the slits by that point, but um it's a long time ago yeah. Is she going to be on the LXB record? I would you know I know she's no, doing music again. I think I, I heard from her recently and she's kind of head, head keeping her head down, getting on with the next thing. I think so. Maybe the next one. She's I saw really it again. I saw it again at uh, the Green Man Festival. And this, this is kind of where I've been communicating, like connecting with my past. Because I go out on tour with John Grant and my past comes to meet me, you know, because he goes, yeah. Budgie, what are you doing here? And I'm like, yeah. I'm playing drums with John Grant. Really? Yeah. We love John Grant. We didn't know you were with him. And so Viv was doing a book signing. So I could see that nobody was making any tea for her or anything. So I sat around and made tea for Viv while she's signing like 200 copies of her book. And yes, that's a great friend. Aww. That is a great friend. <laughs> that is a well, great friend. We do need to take a break, but on the subject of books, that's going to be something we'll get into after the break because there's some talk that's going on with that too that I'm excited about. So we'll be right back with Davey Havoc, Lil Tolhurst, and Budgie on Volume West from Home for more World Goth Day celebrating. Welcome back to Volume West from Home. If you're just tuning in, it is World Goth Day. I mean, honestly, with me, it's like World Goth Day every day. But today is officially World Goth Day. So I invited my co-host, Davey Havoc, Budgie from Susie and the Banshees and the Creatures and Lowell Tollers from The Cure to celebrate properly. And before the break, we were talking about very excitingly this project the two of you are working on, LXB. I cannot wait for it to come out. I cannot wait to hear the track that Davey will be singing on because like the official invitation has been extended on this show. But I know you guys have some other things on and we were talking about books. And Lowell, you did an amazing book, amazing memoir of your time in The Cure called Cure, Two Imaginary Boys. And then I know you were working on another book, but yeah. not mistaken, some kind of like goth anthology or post-punk right. anthology. Right. But I feel like now it's 
has many tentacles and has turned into some other things? <laughs> well, it's morphed into different things, mainly because, you know, to cut a long story short, my, my agent, you know, you have literary agent, and he asked me, you know, he was like, you should do this kind of book. And, you know, I really, I kind of hate research. I'm not the research guy, you know, and I was talking to a friend of mine and I was saying, would you like to do the research? Because I, I can tell you all the stories, but, you know, because between me and Budgie, we know everybody from that <laughs> time. You know, if he doesn't know him, I know him. So mm -hmm. we thought, you know what, we could go around it. I had a, a lunch, actually, when I went for the Hall of Fame, I had a lunch with my agent and he said, why don't you do it the other way around then? Why don't you ask you know, people to either like do a podcast with you or make a documentary or something like that. And then do the book out of that mm. because that would be, you know, then you won't have to do the research. The research will come to you. And of course, then that got extrapolated with me and Baji because, mm. you know, we'd, we 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 found, found a really good sympathetic uh, atmosphere for us to work together. So we, we made, we made a podcast called oh. uh, the bleak end which is uh, welcome to the welcome. bleak end yeah so <laughs> it's basically us we're almost us, there yeah well, it's, the, it's the goth bleak end yes <laughs> it's it's very goth we've done a few interviews already actually as somebody you know we've done an interview with recently and Ooh. it was it was brilliant um Martin? yeah actually uh, well there was mine yeah um, but it was also there was also slim oh, on, a, yeah, on the yeah. golf i don't oh his well yeah. his, his fiance is very well versed in that world jenny v but he, i yeah. didn't think him to be you know a gothy oh, guy oh, oh well here's the thing see he was in london just about the time it all started oh, wow. and we have a we have a mutual friend and contact and we had a chat the other day and we just realized oh my god you were there at the same time everything was going on so we got a different point of view and uh, he was brilliant of course yeah. so it was a really good uh, thing so we're we're putting that together and then i don't know did you have you guys seen uh, beastie boys story have you seen yeah. that yeah it was great yeah, that's really good i really like that and i really like the fact that they uh, they put their whole love of the music and each other and how how it worked so we're going to extrapolate things out to something like that because you know we're um we're quite good at bouncing off of each other me and uh, it's a springboard isn't it talking yes. of bouncing it's a springboard a platform for greater things we're we've done a lot of driving me and lol recently not just around la we've been out the coast to morrow bay <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that's pretty morrow good. bay is one of those places you go on goth day you know yeah yeah, then we went to Sacramento. So we've been we've been all over the place. Really. So are you like gonna sort of do some kind of like the way the Beastie Boys tour was, which then turned into the Beastie Boys story uh, live documentary, like some kind of like TED talk? It was very TED talk in a good way, but it was very yeah. like here's the story we're gonna tell it to you yeah. with like powerpoints and all that. Yes, like um, is it was it was really I really liked it, and I realized that it's really a, a something. One of the things I've enjoyed with my previous book is I've, I've toured around the whole world for the last three years with that and i've done a lot of these festivals uh, the hay festival which is a big one in england and it's like a very big arts festival I have all kinds of people there bill clinton all kinds of people come to talk at it and i recently did one in south america in in, in uh, peru in arequipa and it's just wonderful you know and i overcame my um sheer terror getting out in front of a thousand people like Steve Jobs, you know, with the pointer and everything and doing all that. And I found I loved it. So, you know, we're going to do that kind of thing. And that's what, kind of with the history. What specifically were you speaking on your own history or the history? Yeah, actually, here I was, I was speaking about, you know, I prefaced it with the book stuff, but I also uh, disseminated like how the clave beat, now we're going to get technical, but the clave beat, as, as Budgie will know, is inherently involved in all forms of rock music, if you like, yeah. since the 1950s. So you go from Bo Diddley with the shave and a haircut, two bits, and it goes all the way through. And I realized, I was listening to the stuff that I did, and I realized even albums like Faith have that beat in. It's really, it's really kind of, you know, just indistinct but it's there you know so i i, I had a, a nice um couple of people from uh, roland sorry south america who brought me all the stuff and i demonstrated it live and uh played the whole faith album and you know just oh, wow. people through that and so it was it was a great thing to do except i don't speak spanish so i had to have a 
the live translator. So that was kind of fun. But yeah. So is your book still happening? Because if I'm not mistaken, if you're a liberty say like Davy, you were involved in a book like the book project thing that you were working on, Lil. Well, oh, yeah, that's Lil. the next thing. He gave he gave me a beautiful interview. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're going to ask you. See now now here we go. We're going to ask you to come on the bleak end and do a beautiful interview as well. Oh, absolutely. You wow. are a punk rock historian. Oh, so, well, you know, well that, that's it's very generous, and I would be honored to come on your show, gentlemen. Can I, since we're doing a show right now, can I ask you guys a question that perhaps would fit on your your podcast? If we if we may touch on World Goth Day um, <laughs> and the and this bleak end, is that the uh, royal royal World Goth Day? The, the royal the royal. <laughs> I'm doing the royal wave now. We are yes, it, bats a flutter about us. Um, <laughs> speaking of the word. Um, mm -hmm. if, if we must, which we are, and we must, uh, Davey, I was about to ask this question. We are the same mind. Are you about to ask if they even like this word? I know what I, you're going to say. I, think. I, I have to presume I wasn't even going to go that direct. I have to presume you gentlemen dislike this word, <laughs> but I could be wrong. I was going to go with, when did you first start? When did you first start hearing this word culturally? Uh, both of you, because I, I am I correct? I'm mm. correct to think that, you know, when you guys began playing music, mm. you didn't identify that word didn't exist, correct? No, it, it, it was to, it was only in terms of architecture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And art, uh, yeah. fine, art. art and, uh, fine art and architecture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, for me, I, I pondered that question a lot because I, I know, you know not necessarily the day that I knew I was going to get asked it, but I get asked it constantly. So I'm like, okay. Here's the truth, you know, for me, and I, I think I wouldn't presume to speak for you, Budge, but I think it might mm. be true. We, we, we are, we didn't start out goth because you're right, there was no goth, right. but we were the, like the fertile ground that goth sprang from. So certain elements of what we did, you know, when we first used to come on tour to America, like 1980, I think it was the first time we came here, people would ask us, you know, well, what is the music? You know, what do you play? And Robert would always say, we just play Cure music, you know, that would be his answer. And it was, you know, it was a little flippant maybe, but it was also kind of true because we never thought about, oh, you know, categorizing what we did. But, you know, the first three albums, well, the first four albums of The Cure are really, you know, they're the ground upon which the seeds of goth were, were sown. And so I guess people sort of see that and think, oh, well, that's what you must be. But it, it really, you know, it wasn't us then and it wasn't us as we changed over the years, but it was definitely part of us. You know? Do you remember, uh, do you remember when you first, either of you, do you remember when you first started hearing the word? I, when did that happen? Mm. I know I've read that the wolf child has said that he coined the word because he was talking about uh, Andy sex gang's apartment and the kids right. that used to hang around Andy say, I don't know. Like uh, to me growing up, it's something that, only came into my consciousness in the in the mid '80s, yeah. but I, growing, I imagine. Me, oh, I was, I was just going to say, me growing up in LA, we used we said death rock. We didn't say right. goth. We said death right. rock. Right. So it was something where I know growing up for me, all of the community that were called goth laughed at the word. Right. Um, and but but as far as like at some point, I imagine both of you suddenly saying, "What is this word they keep applying to us?" And I'm yeah. just wondering when, when, <laughs> and I how. Think, <laughs> I think I had a very, a very um, strange experience in the back cave one night with mm -hmm. with uh, Robert, and I think that's probably when I first heard it. I think maybe you were there. The back cave. The back cave is nothing to do with Batman, is it? No. Go on. <laughs> I was going to bring up. The, I was, gonna I was bring, so going to bring up the back. I was going to bring up the back cave too. I wasn't sure if you guys went to the back cave, so I was going to do this. So we've already done it, gentlemen. I used please. to go to the back cave. Well, me and Susie went to the back cave, like always twice, because there was always a, like a, 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 a duplicate couple of us at the front of the queue. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, Hang on, but you you guys are already in. Already here. So, no, no, yeah. no. We just arrived. <laughs> but in actual fact, it was probably it was probably even earlier than that because we used to go to the Camden Palace mm -hmm. with Steve Strange and Rusty Egan and, and all these people, and me and you and Sue and Robert would be there. And I think pretty much that time it was like that was like on the cusp of of goth. And then I remember being on the road 
in Holland and I heard that Ian Curtis had died, you know. Mm. And at that point, everything seemed to go a little bit more that way, you know. Mm. We were just talking about that, Davey and I, um, this week, because on Monday, the Monday that of this week that just passed was the 40th anniversary of the, yeah, May, 8, May 18th, 1980. Wow, yeah. 1980. Okay. Kind of crazy because this music we're talking about, whether yeah. Boy Division, whether it's The Cure, whether it's The Banshees, it's all aged very well. Some music that came out in 1980 or so sounds very much, it sounds dated, for lack of a better word. This does right. not, the stuff we're talking about does not. Yeah, but, the album I joined The Banshees on, uh, John Hans, the tour that Lol and I met on, on. I think more than any, probably more than any other album. Certainly the album that came after when the Banshees rejigged themselves and, and a lot of the songs came from uh, Su Susie and Severin Demo's um, Kaleidoscope was a much more, a much more studio built affair and, and, and was exploring new, new avenues. Juju after that, I think with John McGeoch, we found ourselves with like a, a band identity again. Yeah. And we went to, some places that could have easily spawned that moniker, that title. Yeah. But I think Juju was like, that was a dark place to enter in. Yeah. The, you know, I mean, I'm a, because Robert was playing guitar with the band. Right. So Robert would play with The Cure, The Cure would go on, and then we'd all, they'd all leave, and then Robert would come back. I think he either came back with a Mac on or without a Mac <laughs> on. I can't remember. It was I like think a it was disguise. the other way around. I think he, he wore the Mac with us and took it off to come and play out there with Did him. he put a white shirt on with the Banshees? Yes. I think he might have That's done a big, it, old, it, big, sort of yeah. big old white shirt. And yeah. a lectern. He had like a kind of a priest's yeah. lectern. Now, that yeah. could have been... That could have spawned a rumor easily. Yeah. Look, Robert's preaching from a lect. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> because really all it was was all his notes for all, all these songs. And then always yeah. without fail, he'd somehow catch it with his guitar and these pieces of paper would fly around like yeah. leaves all over the stage. So and you then, know what he did it, after that? Go on. Because, because of that, that effect, he, he would tape notes across the top of his guitar. So people always think he's looking down at his guitar really studiously. What he was doing was reading his notes from <laughs> the top, you know, that, what key the next song's in, you know? Whatever. Yeah. Um, Robert's so you, been in, Robert was in the Banshees twice. Yes. He came do you back. Feel, do you feel around that time that like, you know, the bat, I could talk to you about the bat cave forever. It's like, if there was one place I could go in my, in the past, it would be the bat cave. But do you think when like that was happening, and there was this change with what was happening with the Banshees and, and Robert was playing in both bands and also like the Damned were changing their sound sure. around that time. Did you, maybe you'd only realize it in retrospect, but in retrospect or at the time, did you sort of feel like some kind of movement was going on, like some kind of thing was happening that was like seen? Yeah, no. <laughs> because, 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 you know, I lived in central London at that time. So it was just like, okay, uh, Thursday night was Camden Palace, whatever night was the Bat Cave, and it all seemed to blow one into the other, and it was evolve. I think it was a very fertile, creative time in lots of ways, uh, which got co-opted later on by you know different things, as it always does. But um, I don't think you were aware that it was like, oh yes, now we have to start this new thing. You know, it was perhaps it was enough time had elapsed after those bands we just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay, that that we'd arrived at the that kind of third album. <laughs> if we if you make it to the third album, yeah. then perhaps you sort of go, hey, we can we can do this. So you start to kind of flex your muscles a bit and see how far you can stretch out and still yeah. retain the kind of confidence of the guys in the office, you know, in, in the record yeah. label. Yeah. So I, I think we were just always pushing, see how far we could. And perhaps it was just you pull in all your influences rather than trying to focus everything down into a kind of a neat little manageable pop sort of single. We just like allow the whole brute to come through, you know, all your influences, all the bad dreams, all the, the movies, the books, it, everything kind of condensed into the bands that we'd become. I think we changed. Yeah. I don't think we changed to suit a genre. I think no. the genre tried to kind of figure out what on earth we were doing. 
what he said. That's exactly right. Yeah. No, it's true well, because because I think about what we're doing now and we're doing it on the same operation. We came in and we just threw everything out the window and said, okay, what do we want to do? So we just went in and just played what we love and what we, you know, our influences. And uh, then we would go home and then every morning we'd come back and Jack Knife had made it into this beautiful collage that we had. You know, it was just like this wonderful invention. Wow. 12 months in the kind of, you know, thinking and how can we, gonna, what we're going to do. And then the, la- the first few months of this year where it really came together oh, wow. and then it kind of, then a shutdown came. We were already doing things by file exchange. Yeah. So it was, it just naturally, and then <laughs> got time. Well, I hope you guys have a little bit more time because we need to take a break, but I want to continue our World Goth Day celebration with a little more conversation with you guys. So can you stick around? So oh, yes. you can. Awesome. And we're going to be right back with more Volume West from Home. Welcome back to Volume West from Home. The World Goth Day celebration continues apace with Davey Havoc, Lil Tolhurst, and Budgie. I'm having the best Friday ever. I'm so happy right now. It's so exciting to talk with you guys. What do you do? Is that your, uh, I thought that was your harmonica for a I'd like the listeners to know that that noise was made by Budgie with his hands. Wow. Creating a, a I'm not, impressed. Not, not a woodwind, a flesh wind. No, I was trying to be, not- I, was, I was trying to do an impression of a bat, but I don't think they do. Huh? Uh, it like looks it. like this, budgie. It looks like a bat, but it doesn't sound. <laughs> uh, uh, so we were. I'm impressed. Maybe that'll end up on the LXB record. Um, I think we were talking it, about the LXB. On there. Definitely on there. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is this is exciting. Well, are are you two the are you two the only official members? We are. Uh, oh, well, Garrett's our third member. We always okay. always wanted the producer, wherever he might be. With with the Banshees, it was Mike Hedges. He was always the fifth member. Yeah. So um, it with, feels with like a, this is. With an LXB, Davey's going to be the third member. We've decided that's happening. It's going to be LXB, LXD. I'm here. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Did you realize that we the, just um, got the logo through today, Lowell? What are we going to yeah, do? Oh, yeah, we got the logo. I got the logo done. Um, the album title is, you'll love it. The album title is, is a palindrome. Did you realize that as well? Yeah. Wait, we don't know what the title is. Oh. I sent it to Lindsay. Oh, oh. I didn't know. I, I didn't. Would well, you want to tell our listeners? I didn't know if you wanted to okay. say. It is a palindrome. It's the al- title of the album is Seas, but not oh. as in oh. yes, right. Mm, interesting. Uh, Very as cool. in as in views, but of course you can play with the meaning of the word seas if you can't see it written down. It could yes. be S E I Z E. It could be S E A S. Yeah, yeah. It's a Very tricky cool. little. It's a tricky little number. That is yes. fun. <laughs> and, and all this, all this stuff, and we don't drink or take drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did want to go back there because you were talking about the influences on the LXB record, but we were talking about how the Cure and the Banshees laid the groundwork for what, for better or worse, is now kind of under the umbrella term of goth now. Yeah. But what were your influences or what would you say were influences on that scene? Because I've talked to so many um, artists of your generation. They pretty much all say it was like that one moment when Bowie was on top of the pops. That was like a big, like, like, 1972. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in general, well, what were like the the artists that you came up on that then, you know, the glam artists or the punk artists yeah. or whatever? Well, Lol was saying it was it was David Bowie, right? When you saw Bowie on Top of the Pops, and I saw Mark Boland on Top of the Pops. Yes, uh, it was Mark doing... Boland and Bowie actually for sure. Yeah. Wow. Did you guys have? Did you guys end up having relationships with either of them? Mark Boland well, was certainly around on that first uh, Anarchy tour, I think, with the Damned and. Banshees. There are pictures with Susie and Mark together. Wow. I know. Wow. Did you wow. meet him, Budgie? No. Did you? No, we never met him. Bowie, I, I think we we cross paths. We I was certainly on a few of these kind of things, like like transatlantic phone calls. But you know, when Bowie says, uh, "Hi, Budgie," and I just go like, oh. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. "Freeze." <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I do want to ask you, yes. Lowell, I'm going to assume, because I remember how excited you were when The Cure got into the Rock Hall of Fame, yes, that, the, that now you would be able, well, you were excited in general, of course, but you were also <laughs> excited about the fact that now you would be able to cast votes in future halls. Yes. I, can I, I can assume you voted for T-Rex. I assume you contributed to them getting in this year. I, I, you, can, you assume absolutely correctly. <laughs> I voted for T-Rex. And um, what were my other three? I'm trying to remember. Motorhead, I voted for them. 
Uh, I did a couple of American bands. They got to hurry up, haven't they? They were kind of getting a bit behind the uh, you know the kind of demise of most of these people. Well, well, yeah, and yeah. I'm so happy The Cure got in, but you know, obviously I'd love to see the Banshees get in. I'm glad yeah. Depeche Mode got in this year. I'm going to assume Lola yeah, was who you voted for them. For them. Yeah. I voted but, for them um, what would you say of this era, uh, either goth or we can expand it more to just like post-punk, new right. wave? Like, what are the bands that aren't in or haven't been nominated that need that need to get in? I'd put The Damned in there. I'd put The Banshees in there. I'd put Buzzcocks in there, although they're kind of pre that. But mm. yeah. Joy Division. Yes, all of those actually. Yeah, yeah. You know. I'd like to. I'd like to have seen Wire. Wire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That, that was know, a band, and uh, the Wire, and, and we played on the on our little tour bus. We would play Wire every all the time, yeah. and early psychedelic Furs. Yeah, the Furs. Um, there's there's one. Yeah. I would put the Furs in for sure. Yeah, that pretty much encompasses it all. I think. In talking look- about who um, belongs in the hall and hasn't gotten in, and that took this long for The Cure to get in, it took this long um, for Depeche Mode to get in, and there are other bands of that era like Joy Division or Smiths that aren't in yet. Do you think in general, like the rock critics, the rock critic gatekeeper types have been slow to get on board with this genre of music? I seem to recall back in the day, it didn't really get its critical due, although of course that those tides have turned. Oh, I put Duran Duran in there as well, by the way. But anyway, yeah. go on with my, to answer your question, do you think that this general genre of like what we called in America, like the British and the second British invasion, it seems like critics were kind of slow to embrace it. Well, yes, exactly. Actually, I know who I voted for the other one. I voted for Nine Inch Nails. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But the thing They're is, not that it's, they are now. They are now. Two, three of your votes got in, so thank you for your contribution. To yeah. Bolin or T-Rex and um and Nine Inch Nails yeah. did get in. So here's the thing. I was talking about this with Budgie the other day. America is so big and disparate in lots of ways. Uh, when I first came here in 1980 or 79 to play the first time, I was amazed. You know, like you get those little magazines or little newspapers in every town, like, you know, the LA Weekly mm-hmm. or whatever. It is. So, it, so I would look through those and I would see adverts for bands like Savoy Brown, who I thought had died like 10 years beforehand. And I would show Robert, I'd say, they're still going. And, and I think because America's just so big, it takes that length of time to, to you know, get people to know about everything. That, that's all it is really, I think. I don't, no other reason for it. But the Hall of Fame, you're talking about something that's very um, codified in, in a way that's not necessarily super friendly to where we came from. But then, of course, now it is because, you know, we get in and also uh, the president of the place wrote me a letter when we were coming in. He said, you might remember me. I used to work with your agent back in the 80s. And so I'm really happy that you guys are in. And I'm like, okay, that's good. You know, the thing, Roger will tell you this, the longer you stay in anything, you know, like we've been doing this for 40 years, um, longer you stay here, all your friends who were like, you know, the big rebels back in the days, eventually they end up being the people in 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 the powerful position, you know, so you could just... But that only works to a certain point because in the town where I grew up in the south of London, I have a friend now that I grew up with that's on the city council. And I said to him, why don't you get them to put a plaque outside the pub where we first started, you know, because, the, you know, we need one there. We need one of those little blue plaques, you know, like historic monument. The rocket? Yeah, the rocket, exactly. <laughs> and they won't, they won't bloody do it, you know. What? He's like, I tried, I tried, they won't do it. Shameful. Tim Which Pope told well. me, I was just going to tell you a little, told, Tim Pope told me at the house, because I interviewed him when yeah. the, the documentary came out, the concert film last year. Tim Pope told me that the house where Love Cats was filmed yeah. has, a, has a plaque in front of it that says That's Love good. Cats was filmed here. So That's you got good. that. And the That's house good. is derelict to nobody will go near it, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty derelict when we were there. But um, yeah, well, no, that's good. I mean, you know, in a way, it's really it encapsulates the reason that we started the cure because they were never going to acknowledge us in the town we grew up. But it's funny enough last year because they had the 40th anniversary, right? And so the local museum in the town had a, a cure exhibit and they contacted me and I, I sent a couple of things, whatever the headline on the local newspaper was taken from my book. It says, 
he hates us, but we still love him. You know, oh, which was like uh, crawly. Well, because you know, we, yeah. tr- we just wanted to escape from the town, you know. And so yeah, that you, just to be of... honest, you haven't been the best. Like, t- the tourism board for Crawley ain't going to hire you. No, not you anytime haven't... soon. No. Don't worry yeah. too much about it, Lol. You'll be okay with me. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's right. uh, we only have a, f- you. We only Actually, have a- well, oh, Lindsay, ahead, you just mentioned uh, Tim Pope. And I thought connection with Tim Pope, separated by degrees. Tim Pope did Cure videos, Banshee videos, and Talk Talk videos. Oh. And I thought, I thought, yeah, talk, talk. Yes. They should, they should Thank you, buddy. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Well, we only have a few minutes left, but since Volume West is in LA centric show, and Davey and I both grew up in, in California, nor- northern for him, southern for me. Right. Um, you know, K-Rock has always been really big here. And I've always thought it interesting. Growing up in L.A., I maybe had a disproportionate idea of how big these bands we're talking about were nationally because K-Rock played them so much. And they, when the bands would play here, they would sell out and play big shows. And I've always thought it was so funny that this music that is, um, for lack of a better term, just darker music was so popular in sunny LA, yeah. you know, Ma- home of yeah. Malibu Barbie. Do you guys have any theories about why we're in this place of like the Beach Boys? Yeah. Why there were so many people that loved The Cure and the Banshees and Bauhaus and all these bands? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have th- well, having lived here for 25 years, uh, you know, yeah, <clears throat> I, I know. You know, the things that we talk about, the things we wrote about are applicable to all people. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I go all over South America this last year and you would think well maybe that's a completely different cult no not at all i mean you know the the cure is still absolutely gigantic down there and stuff so it's like i think the things that you talk about which are the uh you know the transition from being teens into a world of you know somewhat you know dubious times is, is very appropriate to everybody and that, that's obviously exists in LA you know the, the suburbs of LA are the same as the suburbs of South London you know so I, I don't see the you know the fact that it's light and sunny and that is is you know a difference but I, I, I think you know if you grow up and you're in a, you say that but you know you grow up and if you grow up in a place that's dim and dismal like London is a lot of the time you might want to go towards that, or you might want to go towards something really happy and joyful, mm. you know, because it's different. We certainly uh, couldn't spend any time outside when we first arrived in Los Angeles. It was way too hot and too oh, sunny. Right. <laughs> so it suited us just fine. Maybe it was our aversion to sunlight that was everybody picked up on, you know. Well, I would Those guys, you guys are so Severin, white. Severin <laughs> would have evaporated if you'd put him in sunlight too much, right? <laughs> so, it was always funny to go see a concert by the band Susan of the Cure back then. Like, for instance, when um, the Cure played Dodger Stadium. Right. Or when I went to see the band Susan at the Palladium, which is an indoor venue, but we all lined up outside because it was, um, you know, general admission. Right. So people lined up so they'd get a good oh. spot. And we're just like all in black oh. and all oh. of our oh. pancake, I mean, yeah. like just melting in the sun. L.A. was not conducive to goth fashion at all, but we, well, you know, we persevered. We we struggled through it. We we suffered. I do remember getting course. my first venture into some rubber. Oh <laughs> yeah, was like a real. How mistake. did you did you use did you did you use a powder? Did you, talcum powder. Yeah, did you use right. the talcum? The, the powder was yeah. yeah it was the powder was moist? Oh, right, exactly. Oh. Take it off and you have a horrible cake underneath. Yeah, the, I mean, terrible. actually, that was that was my worst time i had a pair of leather pants that weren't lined you know and that was my mistake they're gonna be lined if they're not yeah. lined you know you can't bend your knees and oh, I, I was in yeah. new york in the middle of summer you know we played at the ritz and i couldn't walk up the stairs because my knees wouldn't bend with the pants on. Uh, you know, I just, so uh, i was i think we were going to a club called cinematic yeah. and um yeah and i think ron athey was doing one of his performances that night what oh what year was this budgie Whoa! I, the, 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 Sorry, the, I'm just trying to think. I have no idea. It must Had be to like, have been the '90s if it was cinematic. Yeah, uh, it's the '90s. Yeah, yeah, it was the '90s. The Mid-90s. band. I think we were probably full on as the creatures by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would be. But Ron was doing his uh, um, what's he called it? The uh, the horse of Troy uh, mm-hmm. kind of <laughs> performance <laughs> where he's completely encased yes. and wrapped in gaffer tape right. with a little straw to breathe yeah, out of yeah, yeah. and i was just looking at this thinking he's gonna die in there he's gonna <laughs> die in there and, and i'm and i'm kind of i'm getting no oxygen to my body and i'm in rubber <laughs> and i'm thinking 
I'm going to die. And I think I almost, I think I did pass out. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, I mean, it was, the, uh, I was pretty close. I, I pushed profession. it. I pushed my own <laughs> thing to the edge that night. Budgie, where did you get the, where did you get the rubber outfit? What was the rubber outfit? Tell me more. It was, it was just a, a two piece. Okay. But I, I tell you what, I got the shoes from Fredericks. Okay. Nice. Fredericks to Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a photo shoot with the two-piece rubber ensemble land of Frederick shoes <laughs> so, wow. somewhere around the time of Anim- Animus. Yeah. I, 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 rem- I feel I remember that as you've been describing it. And once you placed it around that time, I feel, I mean, you guys did a pretty well-known shoot while you were wearing that outfit, right? The, we did. It was for a spare, what's it called? Is it called Spare Rib? No, is it called? It was, uh, it was a gay magazine in... Was I'm going to say New York, but I think because we did, we also did some shows, shots in San Francisco. Okay. And I remember the dress arrived from probably like Dior, and Susie looked at it and went, "No." And so I got the dress. Yes. Susie got <laughs> Susie got the suit. I got the dress. Yes. And um, and the stilettos, and um, and that was an our Anna Moranis photo shoot. It went everywhere. Yeah. And now I have children, and I'm trying to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we sadly, I'm really sad we are running out of time because I just wanted this to go on. Every day is World Goth Day as far as I'm concerned. So you guys are welcome back anytime. I was really excited and honored that you guys took the time to not only come on the show for World Goth Day, but to give us all that exciting exclusive news that I know your fans are going to be crazy about. Please come back on the show like when that record's coming out. Bring Bobby Gillespie, bring Kim Gordon, bring bring everyone. It's going to be a good time. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you, everybody, for celebrating World Goth Day with us.